if you're looking for a good variety in your games, something a little different, then look no further than the Montrose Cross. The Montrose Cross opens 1115, 2318, and the 1519 exchange. Marion Tinsley often played it in his exhibition games, and Grandmaster Maurice Chambly said it was one of his favorite openings to play, as he felt there were opportunities to win with both sides. White has a number of attacks at hand in this opening, with the prime attack being the initial runoff with 27-24, followed by 21-17. For nearly half a century, the established defense against this attack was the continuation of 1216, followed by 812, which is typically a good strategic development. However, in the 2003 World Championship match between Ron King and Alex Moiseev, this line of play would be nearly knocked out completely and a new standard defense would be established. Let's take a look. First, let's set the stage. It's game 20 of the 2003 world title match. Moiseev holds a 2-1 edge over King with 20 scheduled games to go. When this opening was balloted, Alex had an opportunity to play a cook, which is a term used for a new move that corrected the main line of play. So here is the run-up. After the exchanges, The continued runoff. And now the powerful 2117 attack. This 3 7 is usually seen first, but this 9 13 transposes into the same play. And here we are. 29-25 was the typical established attack, but this 31-27 is what unleashes this nuclear cook, as it is now called. This devastating move is on the front cover of Alex's book, Sixth, as you can see here. And I'd like to read you a snippet from this game. Only tremendous analysis by Mac Banks proved the soundness of the former trunk line. But in fact, even programs failed to find this draw. Now, after this game, it is clear that 8-11 and 3-7 are the only good defenses for red, as 12-16 leads to a very critical game. This game certainly had tremendous influence on the outcome of the final match and changed the course of Checkers history. 16-20, as provided by Mac Banks, is the only sound draw, but it's still an uphill climb. The game against Ron King continued with King playing this 13-17. Moisev then goes 29-25, and then King exchanges off with 19-23. And now after this 14-10, the red game starts to really go downhill. As 
as white is now going to be a piece up. King pitches the piece and starts to make an inroad with this piece. Now, Moisia points out an easier win would be going 25-21 first, but instead he plays 23-19. Still winning, but it allows Red some chances. With the first chance being here, if white decides just to go in quickly with 14-10, red has this 8-11. So a nice trick and trap to watch out for. Red gets the king, and after this 27-24, Moisev states that he saw the win to the very end of the game at this point. White now crowns. King pressing the piece. Red getting another king. And now there is a tactical play here for white. There's a triple jump on the board. I'm sure a number of you can see it at this point. The continuation is 1915. King must jump. And then the white king is going to back up this piece to prepare for this jump. And now we have the triple jump on the board. With Moisev winning the game, with the historic cook and taking a 3 to 1 lead in the match. So, we know now that the 12-16 defense is inferior and let's bring it back up. The opening sequence of the Montrose cross. The first runoff The powerful 21-17, and now again we get to this point. This 12-16 defense is inferior, so what should red play instead? Well, Alex Moisia points out how 8-11 and 3-7 are best, with 8-11 being a bit more natural. You may think, well, the 2-for-2 two two looks natural for white, but actually, the best way to continue the attack is with this 1815, planting a white piece on that center square. With the 2 for 2, that does not happen. But with 1815, it does. So after the exchange, Moisev provides some analysis on how this line may continue with 3-7 next, followed by 25-22, and then binding the single corner with this 9-13 move. White then starts to develop out of the double corner. Red goes 4-8, 27-24, and then 12-16 with the idea to create a column here 
targeted towards White's double corner. Which Red does now with 812 and the exchange. White starts to make an inroad toward the king row. Red doesn't exchange just yet, instead after 610, and now looking to shore up the double corner a little bit for white. And now red deploys the in and out tactic here with 27. White jumps and gets a king, followed by 1-6. The king must jump back. And now we have the double jump here for red. White goes 27-24. Now after 19-23. And 22-18, we have a really good solid draw as one example how this continuation may take place in this superior 8-11 line of play. Dr. Richard Beckwith called Game 20 the centerpiece to Alex's match win, and it's no exaggeration to say the game changed the course of Checkers history. I've always said there is something new to learn in Checkers every single day, and this game proves that. Thanks, as always, for watching.